Hello, I'm Liz Lumley and this is Finextra at Cybos. And today I'm speaking to Daryl Twiggs of SmartStream and we're going to talk a little bit about intraday liquidity. So the, the BIS uh, intraday liquidity monitoring requirements are sort of a key part of most banks' overall risk framework. You know, what shape should some of these monitoring tools really take? Well, there are several elements uh, key to this whole uh, monitoring process, starting with the uh, data collection for monitoring, uh, the alerting for when balances breach thresholds, the audit trail behind the breach and the underlying transactions. Um, these combine uh, to form the basis for the, the actual reporting itself and the flow of that data is also a key element. Okay. Um, and support for stress testing to be able to do uh, re regular analysis of your agents and your counterparties so that you do understand how to change those thresholds dynamically because some agents will perform uh, you know, in a less conformant way, less reliable way than others and, and as a result your thresholds will change. Uh, so it's a very dynamic requirement, it's not um, a, uh, a project where you're going to install uh, a solution, set those thresholds and that's it forever. It's a very dynamic, regular reporting requirement. So what are the benefits of monitoring intraday liquidity in an integrated system? Within the integrated system, if you look at the, um, the infrastructure, what's happening across the back office and the middle office, we have traditionally many lines of business which, which are uh, processing cash flows. Uh, it's part of their day-to-day -day regular job, their trading, they're going through confirmation, settlement, life cycles, uh, whether it's in um, straightforward currency, FX, money markets, but also in corporate actions. There are cash components in equities, derivatives. So there are many cash flows that are occurring uh, and are supported by an infrastructure a team to actually reconcile those solutions all the way through the settlement. In Treasury, they're basically today doing much the same. Okay, they are taking very similar messages, they're doing reconciliation of those, monitoring the status of those balances, but of course when they find an exception, it's the line of business that's ultimately responsible uh, for the reconciliation of that um, or res resolution of that exception. So there's some uh, redundancy of effort, duplication of effort. The integration of a cash management and, and liquidity management solution is that the, the team that's responsible for that instrument being processed, okay, that cash flow, um, is actually doing the work. The, the cash management team can then focus on what's happening to the balances. They can look at the trends, they can do the analysis and, and start to predict um, how that's, those agents and, and, and cash flows are going to be performing um, in, and that's really where they're focused on the job. So it's really about um, reducing uh, the effort, being able to focus on the real role of cash management and treasury okay, uh, and of course all the supporting infrastructure underneath. So aren't institutions even ready to implement the, the BIS intraday liquidity requirements? And you know, if not, what are some of the hurdles that they're facing? Everybody that we've spoken to to date, and we've been looking into this project for the last 18 months or so, um, everyone has initiated a project. So that they are at various uh, stages within uh, a project uh, life cycle. The key element uh, that's really becoming the major challenge is the reliability and quality of the messaging. Now everyone is looking for their agents to provide good quality 900, 910 messages. Okay? And in, as it turns out, that is in fact the poorest message. Uh, so they're, they're trying to encourage their agents who are reluctant to provide better quality messaging. And they're also now having to look at other sources of messages, including uh, 940N uh, series messages where there are cash components and other 900 messages, as well as other internal uh, account reporting, account balancing reports. So they're opening up the scope of where they're going to source that information as the key hurdle. Once they have that in place, um, then I think the next piece will be how they actually overcome some of the issues in terms of latency of the message, um, what is the date and timestamp of a, a balance in, real, in, in the real world? You know, it may well be that a trade um, has been enacted, it has been settled, but it takes a time for that message um, to actually pass through to the Treasury system 
uh, to update a balance and that latency is very important. So the people are looking at the challenge really of message flows uh, and processing.